Hello viewer, thank you for making time for us to study the Bible again. I hope you're ready with your book and you're ready to study Daniel's little secrets. I'd like us to bow down and have a word of prayer. And today we are going to be looking at hidden dimensions in the book of Daniel. And we are going to understand and find that the book of Daniel presents the hidden dimensions of many of life's mysterious events. Things that we might not be able to clearly understand Daniel helps us to see the hidden dimensions to them. And we are going to see what Daniel was able to experience in his own life concerning the sins that are not so plain and clear to us. Let us pray before we proceed. Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for being with us and giving us a chance to be able to study your word. As we go through this study, O oh Father, we pray yet once more that the Holy Spirit is going to be present to speak to us, to give us understanding and wisdom, and to lead us into all truth according to your promise. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. You'll remember that last time we looked at the dividing line, where every man has to make a decision whether he or she wants to walk according to God's word, or whether we want to walk according to the thoughts and the dictates of men. And we realized that man's thoughts and man's principles and man's ideas, as long as they are not founded on God's word, have a different source of inspiration. And we are able to clearly trace and see that the powers that exist in our world today are clearly and quickly climaxing towards a crisis that is going to be over the battle of the authority of God's word and whether you and I are free to live according to that word or not. We saw that there is a possibility that human governments are going to try to attempt and legislate that which God has forbidden or to forbid that which God has expressly commanded. And we realize that God's authority and God's sovereignty as revealed in his word is based on two significant things. The first significant thing is that God is our creator. He calls us to worship him because he is the creator. But apart from that, God wants us to worship him because we have the realization in us that he is the same God who redeems us by the power that he used to create this world. The creator is also the redeemer and that is the reason why he is worthy of all worship and worthy of all glory and honor. But we came to find that there is a power in the world, there is an element that is coming up into our world that is attempting to make God's provisions and God's guidelines and God's principles to have no effect in our lives. And we saw that whenever man tends to forget and to go against what God has expressly commanded, then he begins to tend towards persecuting those who choose to continue walking according to God's word. And we saw that there are, the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 shows to us the grand climax of when man is going to try and legislate to change the times and the laws that God has set by his own authority. And we were able to quickly go through the Ten Commandments, the laws of God. And we found that there is one particular law that deals with God's sovereignty and deals with also the times and the laws that God has set. And we realize that this particular commandment, the fourth commandment, is an express revelation to us of God as the creator and as our redeemer. And God further says that it is a sign that authenticates him and his word as the authority and the sovereign power that is to govern each and every human thought and transaction. And we realize that the little horn is not pleased with this constant reminder that comes to us every seven days. And we saw that the little horn has ventured to try and change the law of God so that man is no longer thinking of worshiping God on the seventh day, but rather on the first day. And these are very, very serious things. And we realize therefore that it is likely that the seventh day issue is going to, is going to have a lot of 
preeminence in the closing crisis of this world. And we have therefore been asking ourselves, what is the dividing line? At what point does a person have security and at what point does he lose that security? And we realize that human governments are going to tend to become oppressive, but God is going to deliver his children. And so we found that the dividing line, the key principle by which we ought to live is, am I living according to the word of God or am I living according to my own thoughts and ideas and according to the ideas and the principles and the thoughts of men? The key and critical issue becomes, is God close to me and am I walking according to his principles or have I decided to willingly put him away from my thoughts and to live my life the way I please. And it is unfortunate, but we need to say that many people do not like to have God dictating things to them. And we think that we are free and, and able to make up our own minds and to decide how our actions and our thoughts are going to be. But remember, God has the right to interpose in your life to superintend over it and to direct exactly what is going to happen in your life because he is God and he is sovereign. And today we want to try and look at what happens in the life of Daniel. We want to try and look at Daniel's lifestyle and what it teaches us concerning how we ought to walk with God. And we are going to identify one of the four principal things that occur in the life of Daniel, which is going to be a model to us. It is one of the four significant things in the life of any Christian. What are some of these important things? The four most critical things in the life of the Christian, of which we are going to be focusing on one today. The first one is the Christian's Bible study life. Any Christian is supposed to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we have been establishing this over and over that a Christian is, is, is defined as someone who walks according to the word of God. Now the second thing which is what we are going to look at today is that a Christian is a prayerful person. And we are going to identify that Daniel prayed and his prayers moved not just heaven but the whole universe and the third important thing in the life of a christian is fellowship the bible reveals to us that daniel had fellowship with his three friends shadrach meshach and abednego whenever they had a problem they would come together and pray and it is important for a Christian to identify the right kind of fellowship, the right kind of people who are also willing to live according to God's word and they are able to encourage each other to instruct one another to pray together and to serve the Lord in one accord. And the final thing that the book of Daniel reveals to us is that a Christian life is supposed to be a witness. It is supposed to reveal to others the light. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. And he says at the same time, you are the light of the world. And so if we are the light of the world, we are supposed to reveal to those in darkness that which we have experienced in our own lives about the, the power and the grace of God. And we see that Daniel is willing to talk to King Nebuchadnezzar and to reveal to him the secrets that God has given him. Daniel is later willing to talk to King Darius. He's willing to talk to Belshazzar. He's willing to talk to all the people that came into his circle of influence and reveal to them the principles of God's word. And so these four important things, Bible study, prayer, fellowship, and witness are supposed not to lack in the life of any Christian. Now today we want to look at prayer because the book of Daniel describes in a very remarkable way what happens when Daniel prays. Now remember we have been talking about the book of Daniel being split into two. 
and we saw that the first part of the book of Daniel has a pattern. The second part of the book of Daniel also has a pattern. The first part of Daniel starts with chapter 1 and goes all the way to chapter 7. And it has three important themes that continue to recur. The first found in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, we have already seen this before, is that God gives to man a view of the kingdoms of this world. The second thing which we have also mentioned previously is that man responds to that which God has revealed. Now the response of the heathen is to try and rise up against God's word, often in persecution to the people who hold God's word dear. And so in Daniel chapter 3 and in Daniel chapter 5, we see in Daniel chapter 3 and Daniel chapter 6, we see a description of how God's people are persecuted. In Daniel chapter 4 and Daniel chapter 5, we see the third element, which is God's response to his people being persecuted. And we saw that God responds with judgment. And so there are three important elements in the first half of the book of Daniel. The first is God's word. The second is the reaction of the heathen to God's word. And the third is God's reaction to what the heathen have done concerning his word. Now when you cross over into Daniel, the second half of the book of Daniel, you will find again three important things occurring. The first, which is, which is similar to the first part, is that God gives his word. So in Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 10 going on, we find God giving his word through his prophet Daniel. Now, in Daniel, the first half of Daniel, we saw the heathen reacting to God's word. In the second half of Daniel, this time it is the godly reacting to his word. We realize that every time Daniel receives the word, he goes into prayer because he does not understand what God has revealed to him and because he is concerned about the implications of what God has revealed to him. And so we saw that in Daniel chapter 9, from verse 1 to verse 25, Daniel is in prayer. And in the same way in Daniel chapter 10, from verse 1 going down, Daniel is once again in prayer. And so Daniel reveals to us the response of a godly man to the word of God is prayer. You cannot study the word of God and fail to pray for those around you. You cannot study the word of God and fail to confess your sins. You cannot study the word of God and fail to ask for strength to overcome. The response of God's word in the life of any Christian is always prayer. And what happens when God's people pray? That is what we are going to be looking at today as we discuss the hidden dimensions of the events that occur in our world today. Now, when we pray, God answers our prayer. But something different also happens, which we are going to see in Daniel chapter 10. Satan responds to God answering our prayer. Turn with me to the book of Daniel chapter 10. We are going to read today three verses in Daniel chapter 10, starting with verse 2 and verse 3. Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 and 3, please open your Bible together with me and let us read together. It says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Daniel says that he received a vision. He saw something and he was troubled by what he saw. The Bible says that he understood what he had seen and it troubled him so much. And so he went down on his knees in prayer. And he was not just praying, but he adopted a kind of a fast. He eliminated certain things from his life because he wanted to focus on prayer and to listen to the voice of God. And the Bible reveals that he was in prayer for three full weeks, praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. Now, verse 11 and 12 reveal to us what happens 
God comes now to answer Daniel's prayer. Remember, Daniel has been in prayer for three full weeks. And what do these verses say? Daniel chapter 10, verse 11 and 12, read with me. It says, And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto you, and stand upright, for unto you am I now sent. This is Gabriel talking. As Daniel was praying, Gabriel is sent to come and answer his prayer. And listen to what Gabriel says. And Daniel said, And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am now come for thy words. Daniel is being told by this angel Gabriel that from the very first day that you began to pray, your prayer was heard and an answer was sent forth. I was sent forth from the very first day that you started praying to come and answer your prayer. Now Daniel has been praying for three weeks. Gabriel reveals that from the very first day of those 21 days when he began to pray, already the answer was commissioned. What happens? Why is it that the prayer lasts 21 days if God had commissioned the answer from the very first day? The next verse reveals to us, continue reading, Daniel chapter 10 verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty and one days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Do you see what is happening? Do you understand the cosmic events that are hidden to our sight, the hidden dimensions of things that we think are of everyday importance? Daniel is instructed and he is told, you began to pray. God heard your prayers. God chose to answer your prayers. However, there was a conflict that you did not even know about that was taking place behind the scenes. And so my ability to come and instruct you on the word of God was a little bit hindered until Michael, one of the chief princes, had to intervene. And after 21 days of fierce conflict, that is when now I am able to come and reveal to you that which God has been trying to communicate for 21 days. And that's not all that Gabriel says to Daniel in verse 20, Daniel chapter 10, verse 20, read with me once again, Gabriel says to him, and then he said, don't you know why I have come to you? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And you remember we had already seen in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 that the prince of Persia, the same prince of Babylon, is Lucifer himself. He is the one, the same way that Michael stands for the children of God, there is a power that pushes the hidden things of this world. And this power is in terrible conflict with the word of God. And so oftentimes, even our rulers, even people in high authority are under the influence of things that are not from the word of God. And there is a fierce conflict that is engaged and is constantly waged between the forces of darkness and the forces of light. This is not a new thing in the book of Daniel. It is something that is clearly revealed in scripture that many of earth's events have a hidden dimension. You must remember the story of Job. And you remember how Job suffered intensely in his life. And you remember how he prayed and he wondered, what is the cause of my suffering? Now when you go to Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, which we cannot read at this moment, but if you go and read the story of Job, Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, you will find that there was a hidden dimension to the suffering that he was going through. The Bible says that one day Satan had access to heaven and he went into heaven and God was boasting about his servant Job. And Satan said, you think Job serves you for no reason? It is because you have blessed him and you have put a wall and a hedge round about him. He can only praise you because his life knows no evil. He is happy all the time. 
And so God says to Satan, it is fine if you think that is the reason why Job is praising me and why Job serves and obeys me, then you can go and test him and you can go and touch the things concerning his life. And so one calamity after another befalls Job. And down here on earth, poor Job doesn't understand that what is happening to him is because of a conflict that had its roots right in heaven. And so there might be things happening in your life or in the lives of people you know and care about. There might be diseases, there might be job losses, there might be relationships that are failing, there might be family and marital problems, things that you might think are a human problem, but the Bible reveals to us that they have a hidden dimension to them. What does Paul say to the Ephesians? He says in Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 going down, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in high places. And so it should be very, very clear to us that what the book of Daniel is describing is not a new element and a new phenomenon, but it is what the word of God does indeed present. And let us look at the second example. In the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 23, let's read what the Bible says. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not come unto thee. But Jesus turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offence unto me. For thou suffest not the things of God, but, that, uh, but those that be of men. And so, look at the scene. Christ is conversing with his disciples. If you walk into the scene, you will see Jesus with the 12 disciples and no one else. But in the course of their conversation, as Jesus begins to reveal to them the suffering that he is going to endure at the hand of the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees, Peter tells him, Lord, that cannot happen to you. I mean, you are the son of God. And then Jesus addresses Peter. But when he addresses Peter, what does he call him? He says, get thee behind me, Satan. And so there was a hidden dimension, which probably even Peter himself was not aware of. Now, I hope it is so clear to you that there is a hidden dimension to almost everything you set your eyes upon in this world. Everything things concerning your life, things concerning your family, things concerning your neighbors, things concerning your workplace, even things concerning the politics of this world, the economics of this world, each and everything. Now, there are three principal ways in which Satan attempts to control the minds of men. We realized in the book of Daniel chapter 10 that as Daniel was praying, Satan was working on the mind of the prince of Persia. He was working on the political leaders in the kingdom and somehow he was preventing that which angel Gabriel was trying to communicate. And when you come to the Bible, it reveals to us three principal ways in which Satan works on the minds of men. One as we have seen, is through persecution. He tries to control the, the minds of men by not just threatening them with persecution, but by persecuting them. We saw that very clearly in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. When the three Hebrew boys refuse to bow down, they are threatened with the fiery furnace. And indeed, they are thrown into the fiery furnace. And so Satan tries to control our minds through persecution. The second way in which Satan tries to control our minds is by inducements or bribes. You find that a, a beautiful life is presented before you and you are induced to just water down 
that which God requires of you, just a little bit. In Daniel chapter 1, you see the principle very, very clearly. Because when Daniel and his friends arrive in Babylon, they are presented with the good things of the world. They are presented with the meat and the wine in the king's palace. And they are presented with a life with no restrictions, a life that knows no bounds. Many people are given job offers. Many people are given beautiful women or handsome men before them. Many people are presented with things that are meant to make their minds lose sight of the glorious ideals of the word of God. And so little by little, they stop focusing on God's word. They think about expensive vehicles, big mansions, nice titles, political power, inducements, and bribes being used by the devil to control the minds of men. But that's not the only way in which the devil tries to control the minds of men. He also tries to control our minds through social influence. And we get to see this so clearly. You find someone is unable to make a decision for Christ and for standing wholly by his word because of what his family or his friends are going to think about him. They are not going to persecute him as such, but because of the social pressures that we go through, we fail to stand fully for Christ. And it is my prayer that we are able to, react, to recognize Satan's attempts to control our minds and to allow our minds to be free, that we may worship God according to the dictates of our conscience. Now, Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 to verse 14 gives a very, very disturbing thought. Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 to verse 14, kindly grab your Bible and share together with me. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the waters thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And then get what the Bible says next. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now we have been studying the book of Daniel long enough to know that the battle of the Lord, the great battle, the great day, the battle of the great day of the Lord God Almighty is the final crisis that comes upon the earth. And the book of Revelation is, is telling us that just in the same way Satan was working against God's purposes through the king of Persia is the same way the Bible reveals to us unfortunate but true that Satan is working upon the minds of people in political power today and causing them to have a unity against God so that they are going to implement principles inspired by Satan and they are going to legislate that which God has expressly forbidden. They are going to bring up elements into government that do not have a basis in God's word and which indeed, apart from not just having a basis in God's word, they also have influences from the devil himself. What kind of principles, what kind of forces, what kind of spirits do you think are at, at, at play in the world today? The first is entertainment. A lot of people have studied the trends in the current entertainment industry and they have realized that there is a lot of devil worship happening therein. And many young people are being drawn into worshiping the devil and having their minds filled with principles and thoughts from the devil himself without them even knowing. And the second way is politics. Many politicians, because they desire the power that this world has in store, they choose to trample upon God's people and upon God's requirement just so that they can have political might and power. And the third is economics. Many people in their pursuit of wealth are struggling 
and turning away from God's word so that they can have a hold on that which God has expressly forbidden. Now, you might know and you might understand a few of the ways in which the devil is trying to fight against God. You might know that he uses New Age principles. You might know that he uses things like the feminist movement at, in the world today. You might know that he is using the gay rights movement and the movement by people who claim that abortion should be legalized. And through all these means, even trade unions, the devil is trying to bring the whole world together for a common cause. But if we study these movements properly, and if we understand just what they stand for, we will see that there is a hidden dimension behind them. There is a power that is pushing them to life. Now, what do we do? Daniel chapter 9 verse 3 and 4 says, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes, and I prayed unto the Lord my God, and I made my confession. The Bible reveals to us that when a Christian prays, that is more than a weapon. It stops each and everything that the devil is planning. The only reason why after three weeks Daniel was able to receive the answer to his prayer was because he had persisted in prayer. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 and 34 tell us, mentioning events from the life of Daniel, making us understand how much Daniel was able to gain by his prayers. Hebrew verse chapter 11 verse 32 going down says, The prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. The Bible reveals to us that when we pray, we tap into a source of energy that is beyond this world. Do not face the struggles in your life with mere human strength, with mere human logic. Call for power from up above. The Bible says to us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so we should be ready to tap into God's source of strength. We should be ready to fight the battles of the Lord. We should be ready to take up every weapon that God has given us. And chiefest among these weapons is prayer. I do not know if you pray, my friend. If you do not pray, you need to make it part of your life. And just at that note, I want us to pray. And I will pray with you that prayer may be a significant part of your life. Shall we pray? Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for revealing to us that we are victors because we have received you in our lives. We acknowledge and we confess that the hidden dimensions in this world are strong and fierce. But we are courageous because you have given us a resource and a weapon by which we can fight all the battles that we have and not just fight them but be victorious as Daniel was. You reveal to us that when we pray, angels fly. When we pray, Michael intervenes. When we pray, flames are quenched. When we pray, lions' mouths are stopped. When we pray, things happen in our lives. And Lord, that is why today we are asking for the spirit and the desire to pray. May you answer our prayer because we have asked in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, my friend. And remember, do not stop praying. The more you pray, the more power you experience in your life. And join us yet once more for another one of Daniel's Little Secrets, and we are going to be blessed together. May God bless you.